Hello wonderful person, this is Anton and in this video we're going to be talking about these unusual galaxies known as super spirals. Galaxies that we've only discovered very recently, about which we kind of know very little. But today we've discovered something new. Let's talk about this and welcome to What The Math. So there are a lot of different types of galaxies out there. There are of course irregular galaxies that don't really have a specific shape. There are also large elliptical galaxies, some of which are the biggest galaxies in the universe. Specifically the one I'm thinking about is IC1101. And generally you can kind of find a few more galaxy types that are out there. But there's one type of a galaxy that was very recently discovered only in 2016 that we never knew existed, simply because they're super super rare. These are called super spiral galaxies. Just like the spiral galaxy uh, the Milky Way, our own galaxy, just like the spiral galaxy Andromeda. But of course, super. In other words, more massive, larger, and more of everything. In other words, imagine if this is our own Milky Way, a typical super spiral galaxy would have about 10 times more mass and also be about 10 times bigger as well while producing way way more light in general and overall being a lot more of everything that you expect a galaxy to be. We've only discovered super spiral galaxies back in 2016 and it actually made the news back then and since then we've discovered only about a hundred of them. Now 100 might sound like a lot of galaxies, but when you think about it, there are at least a few trillion visible galaxies out there. In other words, every single dot right there is a galaxy. There are trillions of these. Trillions. That's one followed by 12 zeros. And of all of these galaxies, we've only discovered about 100 of these super spiral galaxies that you see on the screen here. So in that sense, they do seem to present a bit of a mystery and they do seem to be kind of rare. And so in the study that I'm going to be posting in the description below, we've discovered something really unusual about them. And specifically we've discovered that unlike other galaxies out there that roughly have uh, a somewhat similar galaxy rotation curve, which defines the speed of stars orbiting around the center of the galaxy. This is actually an animation you can find on Wikipedia that shows you that in a typical galaxy that you see on the right, stars tend to orbit a little bit faster than they should. We expect them to orbit slower like in the galaxy on the left. This is how the idea of dark matter was originally proposed by Vera Rubin back in the 70s. But anyway, we're not really talking about dark matter, although it is going to come up at some point. What we've discovered about these super spiral galaxies is that the rotation curve for them is actually a lot higher than a typical galaxy as well. In other words, all of these stars in these galaxies orbit at at least a double, but in most cases even triple the speed. So in other words, if we were to take a look at our galaxy and then try to discover our sun, which I think is right there in the middle somewhere, the uh, orbital speed around the galaxy is roughly around 220 kilometers per second. This is something that's actually similar to stars across the uh, galactic arm here. And it's also similar to other typical spiral galaxies as well. Usually the speed doesn't really differ that much. But for each of these super spirals, the velocity is at least 500 kilometers per second. And in many cases, it seems to be closer to about 600, 570 for this one right here, for example. This is actually what the images of these galaxies look like coming out of Hubble. And what's interesting about all of these galaxies is that they don't really possess that many stars to have such a high velocity. In other words, what all of this suggests is that pretty much all of these galaxies have a tremendous amount of dark matter on the inside. Now, this means two things. One of those things is that this, of course, once again shows us that dark matter is responsible for allowing these galaxies to maintain stars without having them fall apart, even though the stars move really, really fast on the inside. But at the same time, and this is really important, it once again proves the existence of dark matter. There are many different ideas that have been proposed to try to um, explain away dark matter. For example, the most famous one is this right here. It's known as MOND or Modified Newton Dynamics. And um, it just basically tries to change the physics a little bit to allow us to explain the universe without dark matter. But 
every once in a while we discover something, for example a strange galaxy somewhere out there, or in this case hundreds such galaxies, that do once again show us that dark matter seems to be real. It really is holding these galaxies together. There is so far no better explanation for what we're seeing except for this mysterious dark matter. And so for each of these super spiral galaxies we've investigated so far, for the most part the only reasonable explanation is that their galactic halos are tremendously large. The size of these halos are equivalent to a typical uh, dark matter halo in an actual galactic cluster and not just a typical galaxy. So this is really interesting because what this suggests is that these tremendously large galaxies are formed by having several galaxies combined together and then all of this dark matter kind of forms a bubble around them. And so it's as if very large galaxies combined into one and became this tremendous giant known as a super spiral. But all of this also suggests one major thing. This could be the future of the Milky Way. Today we know that the Milky Way is eventually, in the next 3 billion years, going to absorb all of its neighboring galaxies. The smaller galaxies you see in the distance there, those are the large and small Magellanic clouds. And at some point it's also going to swallow the Triangulum Galaxy, which is right there in the distance, and the other galaxy you see next to it, that's the Andromeda. All three galaxies, Triangulum, Andromeda, and of course the Milky Way, are eventually going to become one. They're eventually going to collide into one super galaxy. We think it's going to happen around 4 billion years from now, and it's going to be an event that's most likely going to end up creating one major galaxy in the region. And the way that we believe galaxies evolve today, we also think that at some point it is going to become a spiral. Basically, a super spiral. So, in other words, it's very likely that at some point in the future, our Milky Way galaxy and the Andromeda and the Triangulum all together will look something like this, as one of these super spiral galaxies you see on the screen. So we're technically looking into the future sometime in the next 5 to possibly 10 billion years from now. Now it's not going to be as massive or as bright as any of these galaxies because we just don't have as much mass combined even with Andromeda and the Triangulum galaxy, but it is going to be a large enough galaxy to be noticeable and to have influence compared to some of the other nearby galaxies within around 30 million to maybe 50 million light years away from us. And so it's possible that we've just kind of witnessed the future of our own galaxy sometime in the next few billion years. But even though this study does present us with this possibility of seeing the future, I think a much more important discovery was in regards to dark matter. Because one of the dark matter halos discovered in one of these galaxies was absolutely ridiculously large. The estimates suggest that it was about 40 trillion masses of the sun. That's literally around 1000 times more massive than all of the stars in the Milky Way combined. That is a huge halo. At the same time, they also realized that in these unusual galaxies, the star formation seems to be much lower than you would expect it to be. And the scientists behind this paper suggested that maybe this is also something that's caused by dark matter. Maybe dark matter actually prevents star formation in these types of galaxies. Their explanation involved the um, gas speed and potentially the motion of the gas in general that could be moving too fast for stars to form. And all of this is probably caused by the tremendous power, gravitational power of all of this dark matter in these galaxies. So in other words, because of the amount of dark matter present in these galaxies, the star formation is actually much slower than it should be. And hopefully one day we'll be able to either confirm or disprove this, but for now it's a pretty cool discovery. But anyway, until more studies come out investigating these super spiral galaxies and until we learn more, that's really it. Thank you for watching, subscribe if you still haven't, share this with someone who loves learning about space and sciences, maybe consider supporting this channel on Patreon because it does help me quite a lot, and most importantly, come back tomorrow to learn something you may have not known before. I'll see you tomorrow, space out, and as always, bye-bye.